Spurs 3, United 0. Painful watch as a Man United fan, but here's me thinking at least I'll get I'll finally get some points for Ben Davis with a Spurs clean sheet. But no Pochettino. That's not how FPL works. One pointer for Ben Davis to bring his tally to five points for the season after three games. Just summed up my game week three. I'm going to try and sound upbeat on this podcast, but it's been another nightmare of a weekend. So, welcome to episode 12 of the 59th Minute FPL podcast. I'm the FPL General. You can find me on Twitter at FPL General. Recording on Tuesday the 28th of August, so game week 3 is behind us. Game week 4 coming up this weekend before we go into the dreaded first international break of the season. Two weeks of absolutely nothing. Two very long weeks. In this podcast I'm going to, similar to last week, going to shout out the players who played around 59 minutes at the weekend. Then I'll review game week 3 briefly because it was painful move into talking points from the weekend and talking points going into game week four i'll then mention a few players i've added to my watch list and a few players i've removed game week four captaincy and game week four transfers before uh, wrapping up with a few questions from slack and twitter so I started the podcast uh, mentioning Ben Davis there, who has been, it's been a nightmare really with him. Um, and I'm after doing something I shouldn't have done. I, I did some of the most depressing maths I've ever done in my life. I was just curious to see um, where I would have been if I, if I, if I had went for Robertson and Manny in game week one rather than um, Ben Davis and Christian Eriksen. Again, I shouldn't have done this because now I'm, I'm depressed as I start to record. So I'm sitting, I'm sitting on, I'm sitting about seven hundred k overall, which is not ideal, but it's not terrible. Um, I, I see it as a challenge, and I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna chip away, and it's there's a long way to go. So, but back to the maths. What I did was, I added up what Ericsson and Davis have got me this season so far, which is fifteen points. Robertson and Manny, who I don't own, have scored 56 points between them this season. So that's a difference of 41. So if I was to add 41 points to my FPL score, I would be sitting on 232 points now. And rather than sitting at 700k, I'd be sitting at 41k. What a difference that is. So it just shows you how punishing FPL can be um, with a few uh, with a few 50-50 decisions. Now, I wouldn't say I was 50-50 in Robertson. I was probably never going to go with Robertson um, in the first place. I went Van Dijk. But the Manny Eriksson was a 50-50 decision that has been really painful. So, again, I don't advise anybody to do those kind of calculations. But I was just curious to see what the difference would have been. Um, and I guess, it, I suppose I can be optimistic as well, having done that, because it just shows how just a couple of decisions over the course of two or three game weeks can have a huge effect on your rank. So... Hopefully I can get a few of those right now over the next couple of weeks and months and I'll I'll start moving up the rankings. But anyway, need to try and erase those calculations from my head. Before we get into the podcast itself, all all Premier League players this weekend managed to avoid playing the dreaded 59 minutes. So I'm just going to shout out two players, two honourable mentions. First of all, a player who I own, Mark Warnaudovic who was substituted in the 58th minute after ha- having scored a goal. So missed out on an extra point for playing the 60 and missed out on, on bonus points as well. He might have forced his way into them if he had stayed on the pitch. So disappointing to see Arnie go off before 60. And another player I want to shout out is Phil Jones. He was a hero last season for a lot of managers. Dropped to 5.3 million now. People got excited when they seen him in the starting lineup for United last night. We know what happened. United lost 3-0. But to top things off, Phil Jones came off in the 57th minute with, I think it was a hamstring injury. Uh, for a big fat zero points for Phil Jones. So I know he's not owned by very many people, but if you had him, pretty frustrating. So those are the two shout-outs this week. 
Um, as I said, I don't think there was anyone who played exactly 59 this week. Moving into the Game Week 3 review now. As I said, I'm going to keep this pretty brief because it was it was a it was a game week to forget for me, really. I got 47 points, so below average. I think the average was 50. Red Arrow from about 545k down to about 705, I think I am now. So I'm on 191 points overall. I'll just going to talk a few, a few positives. Uh, Salah Captaincy was a positive. Josh King... Holding on to Josh King paid off nine points. Ericsson finally got something, not enough, but I'll take the assist. Uh, six points, I think Ericsson got me. Um, Arnautovic was a positive, obviously getting his goal before he was taken off. But mostly negatives in game week three for me. Ben Davis getting a one pointer off the bench when Spurs kept a clean sheet. I just I just knew Spurs would keep a clean sheet when when. I seen Ben Davis was on the bench. That's just that's just FPL for you. Just to rub salt in the wounds. Richarlison red card. A lot of us got stung by that. So one of the main talking points will be Richarlison replacements, which I'll come to shortly. The Arnautovic, Arnautovic possible injury, another negative. So just waiting for more news on that before I make any decisions on what I'm going to do this week. The City clean sheet, no no City clean sheet was another negative for me. Uh, as someone who has Ederson and Mendy, I bank on the, the City clean sheet. So again, they didn't keep one, which was disappointing. And Pedro was another disappointment as well, having brought him in. He, he had his chance, he had his chances first half. He had two pretty good chances. Um, one was saved and one he failed to hit the target. So disappointing not to get anything from Pedro. And also he came off early, so... A slight worry going forward, but I'm still hopeful he'll he'll start against Bournemouth game week four, and he'll he'll do something for me there hopefully. So that's that's enough of the review for game week three in terms of my team. Um, just one to forget, and, and looking forward to game week four. Hopefully, put things right. Moving into talking points, so I've got three, uh, three I'm going to talk about. The first one's going to be Richarlison replacements. The second one will be. A little talk about budget strikers, and the third one will be talking a little bit about defence. Is it time to invest more in defence? Maybe go four at the back and things like that. So, first up, Richarlison. He's got a two-game ban, two two-game ban in the Premier League because he'll he'll miss one of the cup games as well. So, Richarlison won't play in the league again now until Arsenal, Arsenal away. Which again is not an ideal fixture for him when he when he returns. So, question is: first question is, do we keep him or do we sell him? Personally, I think we have to sell him with his value dropping and two games out, and then Arsenal when he comes back. So, I just think there's a lot of very good possible replacements to bring in that could bring in the points while he's gone. So, if you don't have any other issues, I think it's a no-brainer to get rid of Richarlison this week. I know a lot of people have already done so. They've moved early for price rises and things like that. I haven't moved yet, so I'm just weighing up the options now for the next day or two uh, before I make any moves. And the Arnautovic, the Arnautovic injury as well, I'm kind of waiting for an update on that because it'll probably affect my decisions. So there's... There's, a, there's quite a lot of possible replacements for Richarlison. Uh, the two most popular are probably Theo Walcott, like for like replacement, and Pedro. So I've already got Pedro, and at this moment in time, uh, Walcott's the one I'm probably leaning towards as a Richarlison replacement. Uh, he's got form, he's got the fixtures. Uh, Everton have Huddersfield and West Ham at home up next, so I can see Theo doing well in those two fixtures. Some people are saying you know, his, his underlying stats are not great. You know, he's probably overperforming at the moment, but I don't look too deeply into stats like that. I just look at it as the fixtures are good, um, and he's got goals and assists this season, playing in a, in a Marco Silva team who who score goals every match they play in. So it, it's it's a no-brainer for me, really, the, the move from Richarlison to Walcott. Uh, it's an easy switch. If you've got a little bit extra cash, a little bit more cash than I have, Mkhitaryan, I still like Mkhitaryan, even though he didn't do much at the weekend for 7.1. I think he's another really good option. Arsenal's fixtures are great. Lucas Moura uh, caused me a lot of pain watching the Spurs game as a United fan. 
I think he's gone to 7.1 million now as well. Looks really good. He's impressed me this season, not just in the United game. He's he's basically seems to be playing right up alongside Kane for for large parts of the matches. So a really good option. Uh, I don't think Son's going to be back anytime soon. I think I think South Korea are in the the semi final now of of the Asian Games or whatever it is he's playing in. So Lucas Lucas should be safe for the next couple of weeks at least, given his form. So definitely another one to consider. I can't afford uh, the straight swap to Mkhitaryan or uh, Lucas, but definitely two you should consider if you've got the cash. Another th- another few I'm going to throw in. Um, another option with Richarlison, if you're getting rid of him, you can you can use it to downgrade him to free up cash. And I know a lot of people are doing that, maybe with the likes of Hazard um, and maybe even Harry Kane in mind as well. So downgrade Richarlison to a... Uh, Somewhere around five million, which frees up cash for the likes of maybe Mane to Hazard for anyone who owns Mane. Um, I know a lot of people are talking about that switch, and I'll talk about it later when it comes to the questions. But that's another option. So around the five million mark, you know, five to five and a half million, you've got the likes of Ruben Neves, Damari Gray at Leicester, I like as well, um, and the two Chelsea lads, Kante and Jorginho. I like the two of those as well. Again, I was impressed with the two of them. Um, in Chelsea's game at the weekend Ryan Fraser's another one 5.6 frees up cash started the season very well so there's there's quite a, there's so many players to choose from um, so it's going to be interesting this weekend we're going to have a lot of managers going for different players which is good it's nice to see the template changing a little bit we don't it's never good when you know you have the majority of people going for the same players obviously the big bandwagon steal Walcott so you know, is it justified or will he will he disappoint like he has done so many times before for us in FPL? Uh, another player impressed me at the weekend was Shirla at Fulham. Uh, I think he had eleven shots against Burnley, which is just crazy in in one game. Got his goal. Should keep his place in the team now. I think after that, he's I think he's dropped to five point nine million. Um, top class player, and and he could he could go on now and have a big season at Fulham. Um, Eleven shots shows you he's a pretty greedy player, which is which is what we like in our in our attackers in FPL. So he's one on my watch list as well. I mentioned Neves. Uh, the thing about Neves, I'm eager to see if he's on penalties. If he's on penalties, he he'll be probably be coming straight into my team. I think. Um, I've been impressed with him with from open play as well. The thing I like about him is, yes, he doesn't get into the box very often, but I like the fact that he shoots on sight. If if he sees the goal, he just lets he he just has a pop, and he's he, he tends to be pretty accurate as well with those long range efforts from what I've seen anyway. Um, so I like that about Neves. Obviously, he's got the assist potential there as well for for set pieces and things like that. He got a great assist. I think it was game week one when the Jimenez got his header. So I I think Neves will take over this season, and at five point one, I think he's a great option. Back to the Chelsea lads then, Jorginho and Kante. Uh, obviously Hazard's on penalties now which probably uh, diminishes Jorginho's appeal but Jorginho had crazy stats at the weekend I think he had something like I think I think he had nearly 150 touches in the opposition's half which is just huge for for one game so definitely assist potential there maybe even a goal or two from him as well so he's definitely one to consider even though he's not on penalties and and Kante again playing further forward, he will pick up assists and goals this season. So it just depends which one you prefer out of those two. They're probably pretty similar in FPL terms. One more player I wanted to mention uh, when I'm on the topic of Richarlison is Pascal Gross. 6.9 million he's dropped to now. Um, Brighton do have tough fixtures coming up, which which is probably enough to put me off him. Um he he was benched. He was benched for the Liverpool game at the weekend. Uh, he did come on and he he had a great chance uh, that Allison saved. But I came across a good article on Reddit yesterday about Gross uh, from a from a Brighton fan who was just saying that he he expects um, he expects Gross to be rested in some of the the away games this season um, with the new sign in Basuma. He I think he played against Liverpool at the weekend. He just offers a bit more pace and power in the midfield. For the away games where where Brighton are going to be you know set up pretty defensively, so again there's there's rotation worries with Gross, but but when he plays, you know everything goes through him for Brighton. So I think Gross will be a, a strong candidate for home games this season, but 
the fact that that he may he, it looks like he will be rotated this season in certain games. Um, I think we just need need to be very wary of him this season, uh, and it's probably enough just to put me off him. You know, and as I said, Brighton's fixtures are tough as well, so it's just it's just. Um, I know some people will be looking at Gross to to, to replace Richardson, but just be wary of that 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 he could he could be rotated more this season than he was last season uh, with that new guy there to to fill in. So again, there's there's loads of ways you can go uh, if you're placing Richardson. Um, I'm leaning Theo, but there, I'm going to be doing uh, researching all the others this week, um, and I'm probably just going to be patient with it. There's midweek cup games this week as well, um, so we're bound to see a couple of first teamers get run out. There's always the risk of injury and suspensions uh, for the weekend as well. So if you can afford to be patient this week, I would advise it. Because we never know what might happen in these cup games, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday night. Moving on to the next talking point, budget strikers. A lot of people are asking me, you know, who do I prefer, Mitrovic, Zaha, Wilson? There's loads of options. So I've got Josh King and Arnautovic at the moment. I'm probably going to keep Josh King and hope he bursts Alonso's bubble this weekend. um, Because I'm probably not going to get Alonso this week as much as I'd like to. Um, so I'm, I'm probably going to hold on to Josh King and hopefully he wipes out the, the Chelsea clean sheet for me at the weekend. But back to those three, Mitrovic 6.6 million, Wilson 6.1 million and Zaha is 7 million. So all players in good form um, with with pretty good, with decent fixtures as well, I think, for all three of them. Uh, a lot of people are looking to, to bring one of those in this week. I don't, I don't think I have a preference at the moment. Um, probably because I haven't done a lot of research into them, but all three have impressed me uh, in terms of the eye test from what I've seen this season. Um, Wilson's been superb. Again, at the weekend, he didn't score, but he, but he looked very, very sharp, got two assists. Mitrovic is just... He just looks a far better player now than when he was at Newcastle. Uh, I think two goals and an assist for... I think he got a 16-point haul at the weekend, so well done to anyone who got him in before that one. Um, huge points there and probably guaranteed you a green arrow uh, I really like Mitrovic everything, everything he's got I think he's got a very high goal involvement at Fulham this season it's probably up around 80% so if Fulham scores there's a good chance Mitrovic is going to be involved be it assists or, or goals he hit the post as well at the weekend so he, he wasn't far off getting a hat-trick Zaha Zaha was pretty frustrated uh, he was against Watford he, Kapui should have been sent off for, for uh, going down the back of his calf early on which seemed to affect Zaha he was riled up he got booked himself I think as well afterwards but he but he came into the game later on then and he, and he got the goal and I'm, I'm a big fan of Zaha and he's definitely going to be one I'm going to be considering if Arnautovic is out injured um, I think Palace have good fixtures coming up I'm just getting them up here in front of me Palace have Southampton, Huddersfield, Newcastle, Bournemouth, Wolves in the next five. So Zaha definitely one to consider. So again, those three, I don't think you can go wrong with any of them. It just really depends on, on which which you prefer for the next couple of game weeks. Mitrovic, Wilson and Zaha, three very, very good options. Just when I'm on the budget strikers, I'll touch on Danny Ings. A lot of people went for him last week and he disappointed. I think he came off after around 68 minutes, so... There is always the chance he'll share game time with the likes of Austin, Shane Long um, and Gabby Adini's there as well. So it's always a worry, but I do think Ng should be nailed on most weeks uh, and I do think he, he remains a very good option. The pl- Another player that interests me, 5.5 million, is Jimenez at Wolves. Uh, the striker at Wolves, he's played 90 minutes in all three games so far and he, and he looks good. He's impressed me. He scored the first week against Everton and... He had one ruled out against Man City. So if that one wasn't ruled out, there'd probably be a lot more people talking about him this week. Um, and I don't think there's much between Ings and Jimenez for you know a real budget striker, 5.5 million, 5.6 million. So if you're thinking about Ings, don't, don't rule out Jimenez as an alternative. Um, he could be a nice differential. That's enough on budget strikers. Moving on to talking about defence a little bit now. A lot of people are asking me, you know, all the the value seems to be in defence so far this season. You know, we've got a lot of uh, premium defenders producing the goods, the likes of Trippier, Alonso, 
Robertson, all these guys. Uh, Monreal threw his name into the mix this weekend as well. So is it time to invest in defence? Um, the, the simple answer for me is yes. I've I've never I've never played with four at the back before, but I'm getting closer and closer to doing it this season. And if I was on a wild card this week, I think I'd be setting up with four defenders, probably four premium defenders and one Basaka as a as a first sub. So that that gives you an idea of what I think about the defenders so far this season. I'm currently on Troll Ben Davis, uh, Benjamin Mendy, and Van Anholt. So. It's all about the wing backs this season. Alonso, I want. Trippier is on my watch list. Monreal, I like as well. He impressed me at the weekend. Um, and Robertson's another player I'd like to work in at some point in the near future. Liverpool's fixtures are turning a little bit now. So I'm not as concerned about not owning Robertson. I don't want to go chasing his points. Liverpool have Leicester away this weekend, which is not easy. Then they have Spurs, Chelsea, and Man City in their next four after that. So. I don't see Liverpool's clean sheets keeping up over the next couple of weeks. So I'm happy enough to go without the their defensive assets um, for now. But yeah, definitely defence we need to we probably need to pay more attention to. Uh, if you're like me and you've only, you know, got three premium defenders, I think it's probably time to look at fo- a fourth one. Uh, the likes of Alonso for sure is is in my thoughts. Um and I haven't ruled out taking a hit this week. I haven't taken any hits this season. But I haven't ruled out a hit this week for someone like Alonso. Um, but I'm probably going to wildcard pretty soon. So I don't really like taking a hit if I'm going to wildcard soon. So it's something I need to think about for the next next couple of days. That's talking points covered. Moving on now to my watch list, which I keep on the FPL website. A couple I've added this week. Uh, Monreal. Eden Hazard, who has trolled me many times in the past, um, but he looks superb at the weekend, and I think he could become a must-have very soon. I think he's going to do well in Sarri's system, and no matter how much he's hurt me in the past, he's he's very high on my watch list now. Another I've added is Shirla, who I've mentioned, 11 shots at the weekend. Alexander-Arnold is another one I've added to the watch list. I'm warming to him now. Um, Robertson is the one I probably want to go for, but we can't ignore Alexander Arnold for five million. You know he saves a lot of cash. He's been he's got three bookings in three games, which is frustrating for those who own him. But you know he does offer the attack and threat like Robertson. Maybe not as much, but I think for the for the money saved, uh, the smart play might be to go Alexander Arnold, and you know invest the extra one point one million or whatever it is elsewhere in your team. Um, Alexander Arnold's got set pieces as well, which is which is a bonus for him. So I think we could see him starting to maybe match Robertson more regularly now if he can cut out the yellow cards. Another player I added this week to the watch list is Matt Doherty, the right wing back at Wolves. He's dropped to four point four million now. Wolves haven't been keeping clean sheets, but Doherty Doherty gets forward a lot. Um and the 4.4 million is the attraction there. So if you're looking for a cheap defender, I think he's one to consider. Gets forward a lot. I think it was him uh, when when Bolly scored against Man City. I think Doherty was the one who just missed get it, missed out getting on the touch before him. So that gives you an idea of you know the positions he gets himself into. Um, so he's one I'm going to keep an eye on. A couple of players then I've removed from the watch list this week. Will Hughes, mainly due to fixtures are tough coming up now for Watford so I didn't mention Pereira when I was talking about Richarlison replacements mainly a fixture thing as well Pereira has impressed me but it's just a watch list for me now Um, it's a wait and see because Watford have Spurs, United and Arsenal in their next five, in their next four actually so I'm not willing to invest in Pereira just yet Another I've removed is Morata. I don't really know why he was on my watch list in the first place, but he only played 64 minutes. He still seems to be struggling for form. And the likes of of Hazard and Alonso, um, they're the Chelsea players I want long term. And with the watch list, I don't have any Burnley players on it at the moment as well. just wanted to mention that. They seem to be struggling with the... Europa League games on Thursdays and then the, the league games on Sundays. Um, 
I know I think they're playing Thursday night uh, this week. And if they if they qualify for the group stages of the Europa League, I'm probably just going to avoid Burnley completely, uh, at least for the first first couple of months of the season. I think they conceded 25 shots against Fulham at the weekend, which is just unheard of for Burnley. They're usually a very compact side defensively. Uh, conceding four goals is just it's not what you want from your defenders and their defenders are probably all overpriced anyway now I think they're all 5 million this season so I wouldn't touch any of those for 5 million Joe Hart 4.5 if he keeps his place maybe but at the moment I'm not interested in Burnley whatsoever moving on to captaincy for game week 4 I had a quick look at the polls on Fancy Football Scout before I started recording Aguero's miles in front on 69%. Home game against Newcastle. I think I've seen a stat this week where it said Aguero scored 14 goals in 12 games against Newcastle. And I think he had three assists as well. So that tells you all you need to know for game week four. My armband's on Aguero and it won't be moving from him at all. Salah was second in the poll with 10%. He's away to Leicester, which I, which I think could be a tricky fixture for Liverpool this weekend. Uh, Hazard was in third on 6%. A home game against Bournemouth for Hazard is very attractive. If you own him, I think he is worth consideration for captaincy this weekend. But again, if you've got Hazard and Aguero, I think it's got to be Aguero this weekend. The Another two players in the captaincy poll I'm going to mention, Harry Kane had just 1.5% of the vote. Uh, he, he's away to Watford. You know, he's he's got he's got two goals in the league this season. So if you're looking for a differential captain this weekend, Harry Kane could be the man for you. Aubameyang has Cardiff away, but he only has one 1.6% of the vote in the captaincy poll. So he hasn't justified, he hasn't done enough to justify captaincy this weekend, in my opinion. Um... It's probably enough just to own him this weekend against Cardiff rather than captaining him. So, but if you're brave enough, if you think Arsenal are going to do well against Cardiff and Aubameyang's going to finally start firing, he's another he's another to consider. But it wouldn't be for me if I owned him. That's captaincy covered. Uh, moving into transfers, my transfers for game week four. So I haven't done anything yet, as I mentioned. Most likely, it's going to be Richarlison out for. Probably Theo Walcott, but again, I'm gonna I'm gonna look at the other options as well. Uh, maybe look at the option of downgrading with a view to maybe doing something uh, for game week five. Then with the cash that I've saved, um, I'm, I, my transfers. I'm, I'm waiting for Arnautovic and a, an update on his injury as well because if Arnautovic is ruled out of the weekend, that means I've got Richarlison out and Arnautovic out, so that could change my thinking. I don't think it would be enough for me to activate the wild card. Um, but it, it may change uh, my thoughts it, it might force me into a minus four maybe um, I do have one Bissaka to come in off the bench if Arnautovic is ruled out and if I replace Richarlison for example with Walcott it, it will give me 11 players with probably Stevens on my bench is the only player who'll play so you're looking at only tw- a squad of 12 for the weekend which is not ideal but it's, I could probably uh, limp through it so I'll wait and see what happens with Arnie before making any moves. I mentioned the wild card. I, ha- I was tempted last week and I was tempted again this week to rage wild card, but I've been patient and resisted temptation. I'm not I'm not letting my overall rank uh, you know force me into an early wild card. Um, because when I look at my squad for game week game week four on paper it looks fine. There's no major issues apart from Richardson and Arnautovic. Um, I just I don't think it warrants a wild card at this stage. You know I've got Pedro's home to Bournemouth, Ericsson and Davis. Hopefully will come good against Watford. Um, I've got Aguero, I've got Mendy and Ederson, I've got Van Aanholt. So again, on paper it should be enough for a green arrow. So I'm not I'm not going to wild card just yet. When it comes to wild card, I just feel it's a long time. Before we get another wild card, um, if I'm going to play it, you know, late in the season for the around the blank game weeks and double game weeks and things like that, so it's a long time. To, to you're going to build a squad this week, you know, with a wild card that needs to do you, you know, right through the Christmas rotation and everything like that. So 
and there's just three you know we only have three game weeks of data to go on and i just like a little bit more before i wild card so depending on how game week four goes there is a chance that i'll play it between game week four and game week five during the international break um but ho- i'm hoping that i'll be able to maybe hold off a little bit longer Moving on to questions, I'll get through these as quickly as I can. I know t- I'm going on a bit longer than usual here. I've got five questions from Twitter and Slack. First question, uh, the same question from Jared and Devan Rag- Raja in Slack. They mentioned the four big hitters, so Aguero, Salah, Hazard and Kane. Um, which three would you choose out of these four? So it's pretty difficult to fit all four in. It's going to affect the balance of your squad and your squad depth if you pick all four of those. So, in my opinion, if I had to pick three out of those four at this point in time, Aguero, Salah and Hazard. Kane's the one I would go without at the moment. I just don't think he's justifying 12.5 million at the moment with a tough run of fixtures. Um... I just think Aguero, Salah and, and Hazard, I think, will offer better value over the coming weeks. So Kane's the one I would sacrifice for the moment. But especially if you're on a wild card this week, do think about Harry Kane if you're not including him. Because you want to be able to get him you know, within uh, two moves without having to perform too much surgery. So just keep him in mind. But that's the way I would go with those four, Aguero, Salah and Hazard. Next question from Slack again is from Vince. Uh, it's a wild card question, so he's just asking when is the best time to wild card. I get this a lot, um, and my answer is always the same. There is no right or wrong time to wild card. It completely depends on your own team. You will know looking at your squad when you need to wild card. Um, and like I said, looking at my squad for game week four, to fight, despite a disappointing rank, I don't feel it's warranted because I feel like I've got a pretty strong squad for game week four. Um, if you've got a lot of issues this week, if you've got suspensions, a lot of injuries, and there's a lot of players you want to bring in who are rising in price, then then by all means go for it. But again, you'll you'll know when when the best time to wildcard is. There is no right or wrong time to do it. Some people play it early, some people hold off closer to Christmas. It just depends on on your squad. Question three is from Twitter from FPL Price Changes. Are Kane and Hazard becoming essential? So, essential is a big word to use in FPL. At this point in time, I don't think any player is essential. You know, there's there's different ways to play the game. A lot of people will say Mo Salah is essential because of his ownership, because of what he done last season, things like that. Um, but I, but I don't think any player is essential. It depends how you want to play the game. You know, going without Salah, you can get a lot of you know. A lot of a stronger squad overall, so by no means is Salah essential. I don't think Kane's essential either. I mentioned already it's a lot of money to pay uh, for someone when you've got the likes of Aguero, uh, Hazard, and Salah doing the business as well. So, no, my answer is no, they're not essential yet. I don't think anybody is, um, but they could become essential pretty quickly. Next question is from Doug. On Twitter as well. Should we sell Ben Davis due to Danny Rose rotation? So this is a question um, I need to consider myself. Very frustrating that Danny Rose started last night. Not surprising either. We always know that Pochettino rotates his fullback, so it was something we had to expect going with Ben Davis. Just very frustrating. It was the one game week where Spurs kept a clean sheet. Um should we sell Davis because of Danny Rose? I don't think so after last night. Um, the way I would look at it is Danny Rose has got his game now, so Ben Davis should come back in in game week four against Watford. And I think Danny Rose might have picked up an injury as well um, last night, so keep an eye on that. So if Rose is ruled out for a couple of weeks, Davis might be a, a long-term hold then. So I'm I'm hopeful that both Ericsson and Davis repay the faith in game week four. Ericsson did a little bit for me game week three but again not enough i'm hoping that ericsson and davis outscore the liverpool lads in, in game week four but more than likely i'll just have to be put through more pain by sadio Mane and andrew robertson 
Last question for this episode from Hector Palmer on Twitter as well. He's asking, should he go Mane to Hazard? Um, a lot of people are going to be considering this move this week and maybe next week as well. Um, and I do think it could be a good move. It's easy for me to say that. Now, I want everyone to sell Mane because he's hurt me so much. But putting that aside, it, it might be the right time to move from Mane to, to Hazard when you look at fixtures. So Liverpool have got Leicester away, as I say, which is a tough fixture. Then they've got Spurs, Chelsea and City coming up. So not not, not easy for Mane. And when you compare that to Hazard's fixtures, Bournemouth, Cardiff, West Ham, then Liverpool and then Southampton. So superb fixtures for Hazard. I can see him going big over the next few weeks. I'm going to fear Eden Hazard this weekend if I don't bring him in against Bournemouth. I see him going big there. I see him going big against Cardiff. I can see him going big against West Ham. So definitely a move I would be considering if I owned Manny. I would be looking at moving to, to Hazard this week. I think that's everything covered for this week. Um, if you enjoy, If you enjoyed the podcast, if you enjoy it every week, you can support me now on Patreon. Um, you can, you'll find all the details at patreon.com forward slash FPL general. So I'm working from home full time this season on all things fantasy football. So any support on Patreon is much appreciated. Um, and there's loads of different things you can get on Patreon. So we have a, I have a private Slack channel. We have about 200 people on there now every day discussing FPL at all hours from all corners of the globe so it's really good um, and there's WhatsApp options as well but as I say every, all the all the Patreon information patreon.com forward slash FPL general and any questions you have about Patreon or Slack or anything like that just send me a message on Twitter at FPL general or you can pop me an email as well and I'll be happy to answer any questions you have Thanks as always for listening. Your support is appreciated. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, give it a retweet. If you're on YouTube, give it a thumbs up. An iTunes review, five stars preferably, would be much appreciated as well. Helps me to get the podcast out there a little bit more. Leave a comment as well, wherever you are, whether it be YouTube, iTunes, SoundCloud. I see all of those comments and I'll try to get back to you before deadline on those comments. Uh, Tonight, I'm going to be making my... Scoutcast debut at 9pm UK so check that out on the Fantasy Football Scout YouTube channel um, I'll be back next podcast probably we've got the international break coming up so it won't be next Tuesday it'll be the following Tuesday so two weeks from today will be the next 59th minute FPL podcast enjoy the rest of your week and Try to try be patient with the transfer this week if you can because, as I said, we never know what might happen in these cup games on Tuesday and Wednesday night. So thanks again, folks, and I'll talk to you in two weeks' time.